Hi, my name is Pastor Ronald Kozar, and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Crossing Paths Ministries today. With me today, this is a great show, so I'm glad you tuned in. Amen. <laughs> this is my beautiful wife, Deborah. I'd like to welcome her to the set today, the founder of Crossing Paths Ministries, Don Reed Sr., and his beautiful wife, Joyce Reed. Hallelujah. And we're coming to you today on one of my favorite topics. I've studied eschatology for about 42 years, so I love eschatology. So you may be saying, what is eschatology? Well, eschatology is the study of the last days or the end times, specifically that's written in the book of Revelation and also Daniel. But what we're going to talk about today is some of the topics in the book of Daniel because so many of you have called in or have shown an interest in this, or have a desire to know the answer about some of the things that's happening on the earth today with maybe Israel, Jerusalem, Great Britain, Germany, Russia. is very big to know what's happening in Russia. Yes. And the most important is where we're going to spend eternity. So I'd like to turn it over to the founder, Don Reed Senior. Well, you know, I think the Joyce has got my scripture here she's going to read, but let me tell you something. A lot of people in the church at least when I wasn't saved, have no idea what's going on today. When I threw dice in Las Vegas, people honestly, 9-11, I wasn't there naturally, I, I was saved at that particular time, but I would not have stopped throwing dice. I was so possessed with another spirit. I knew nothing about Jesus Christ. Yes, I know the Ten Commandments, all that and so forth. I wasn't saved. Now Joyce is going to read this scripture here, and then now that I'm saved, this picture now becomes alive. Go ahead, Joyce. From Revelation 3, 20, right? Yep. It says, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. And you know, this is a picture, and maybe you've all seen it, Jesus uh, or someone knocking at the door, you cannot open that from the outside. You have to open it from, there's no doorknob on that picture. Mm -hmm. No doorknob. So it's up to us, I think is Amen. what the picture is saying, right? right. Yeah. It's up to us Amen. to open that door and let him and in. he will come in and sup with us. Yeah, see, I remember I said a minute ago, I said, mm -hmm. I, I, I remember that picture, but it, until years ago, I mean, that knob, you know, that knob, that wasn't even considering. Oh, it just was a door. Yeah. And Jesus there, right? Right. And now when you become saved and born again, John 3, 3, 1 Peter 1, 23, okay? Now that my eyes have been opened, and I, all of a sudden, this Bible becomes alive. Now, Ron, I'm not, I've said this a hundred times. It makes a point. I went to Westminster College, and I flunked Bible twice <laughs> because I went there on a basketball scholarship, and I still made it and played and so forth. So that's over the hill. All right, maybe something stuck with my old Dr. Hopkins friends. I don't know, right? <laughs> but I'm standing here, and when I got saved, I started looking and saying, rapture? What the heck does that mean? Uh, great white throne judgments? Yep. I had no, I, don't forget, I took Bible for two years in a row, a class on Bible, but I still, since I'm not spiritually born again, it's just in one ear and out the eye or whatever, okay? Yeah. And one of the first, one, one of the many scriptures I got there when I, when I started reading was this here, was Revelation 20, verse 11. And listen to me, people, because maybe I'm getting cross to you that I had no fear of God, by the way, Ron. Amen. You know, when I, the life I was living, a lot yep. of people say, well, I fear God. Well, you don't fear God if you're breaking God's commandments or whatever, you know, even though you know you can't keep all the and commandments. And no thought right? of death or afterwards. What? And no thought of death or life after. Nothing, nothing. Nothing. No, the only commandment I feared, honestly, God, was killing someone hmm. because I know I go to prison. Hmm. But as far as committing adultery and the rest of them, I had no fear of God. Hmm. Wow. And I didn't know. I mean, that's why mm -hmm. when they made the, the trailer of my life, as you probably will hear it later on and mm -hmm. see sometime, right? Uh, I was so lost. Mm -hmm. But when I became alive, mm -hmm. hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. This hallelujah. Bible become alive. Amen. And I devoured it down in my cellar. But here's the one that stripped me. I wanted. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, 
small and great, stand before God. Now, be an accountant here now. Here's my part. <laughs> In the books. <laughs> and I'm glad there's no books in heaven for accountants because I don't want to do no more books. Anymore, okay? And the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead. Now, I can go on and read that. But, Ron, I understand now that there's books in heaven, right? Yes, sir. And... There are different types of books. I think there's five books in the Bible, and we're not going to go through each one of them, right? Right. And a lot of people think works will get you to heaven. Is that true? No. Being a, being a good person is a good thing, but it won't get you into heaven. The, the first base for us to open the door, the window that Joyce was talking about, that door for you to be able to get into heaven is you must receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Without Jesus, you're never getting into heaven. That is one thing that everybody agrees upon. Amen. So we must accept Jesus Christ as both Lord and Savior. What about the people that think that I do a lot of works, I've been a good person all my life, and so forth, even though we read it. We're talking now about the great white throne judgment, right? Yep. This is the people who are lost, mm. that have never received Jesus mm. Christ as their Lord and Savior, right? Right. They're going to come out of the grave, and they're going to stand before that great white throne judgment, right? Yep. We know, I'm not going to get off here the track here, we know there's another judgment. Yep. That's the judgment seat of Christ. Yep. That's for all of us here. Right. All of you out there who are believers, Acts 16, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved, right? And in, in the Old Testament, it said, Abraham believed in the Lord, and the Lord counted that unto him for righteousness, okay? Right. So here, the books are open, and that's when they're going to be a, they'll be cast into hell. Am I right, Ron? Those that names are not written in the book of life. Well, let's look and see what your Bible says, because I'm using your Bible today. Okay. Your Bible says right here where you quit reading. It says, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death, so death, and also hell, delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And then, listen what happens, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. So listen, this is the last stage. A lot of people think they're going to go to hell. Well, when you go to hell, hell is simply the holding tank. Hell is that place where you go and stay until this judgment that Dawn is talking about. Now, Dawn said that there is a, notice how I said Dawn said. So if you get mad at me, I just say Dawn said. <laughs> but we do have a judgment seat of Christ. Now, what Dawn meant by that was, is there is a, there is a judgment seat that Jesus will sit on. Now, Jesus is going to judge us who've accepted him as Lord and Savior. Now, it tells us in 1 Corinthians, it says that every man shall be tried as though by fire. So when our works are tried by fire, the Bible says some people are going to have wood, hay, and stubble. That's going to be our sin. And then the fire of God is going to consume that. But then other people are going to have silver, gold, and precious stones. That's what we're going to get rewarded by. So you're going to get rewards for doing good once you know Jesus. And also penalties for your sin. Same as for the people that don't know Jesus. Now for those of you who, who are saying, well, I'm just a do-gooder, but I don't know Jesus. That's why it's so important to know Jesus. The same thing happened to you. Why? Because God's a fair judge. But in the final stages here, what Dawn read... Right before dawn, where he read that in verse 10, it says, And the devil did deceive them. He was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And also the beast and the false prophet was there. And they shall be tor tormented there day and night forever. Mm -hmm. Then we know death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. And what's beautiful here, and I'm going to stop with this. It says, This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, these were the people that are cast into the lake of fire with death and hell and the devil forever. So Ron, the key is, is making sure that our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Ron, in that verse 10, 10. Uh, yeah, chapter 20, yep. is that what they refer to as the devil's trinity? Yes. 
the yeah. beast, the false prophet, mm -hmm. and the devil. And the devil. Mm -hmm. The devil, the there's beast, and the false prophet. Right. So, Just like Deborah said, there's always a counterfeit. She yeah. said the Father, Son, Son the Holy Son. Ghost. Right. You have the, the devil here, the, the false prophet, and the beast. Oh. Yep. But th this is the layout, and a lot of people don't understand this, but that's basically how, when Dawn was talking about the judgments, how it is going to be in, in the last days. That's how it's going to break down. When people die now, and this is a concern for you if you're watching the show today, death is not a permanent end to your life. Death is only a separation now from this life. You'll, you'll never die. Every single person will live forever. You're given a spirit and a soul, and they live in this thing called the body. Well, when you die, your spirit and soul lives on forever. It's just a matter of what location you're going to go to. You're going to go to hell, which is the holding tank, until the great white throne judgment, like Dawn said, or the judgment seat of Christ, whatever judgment you're going to go to. And then the fine, after the final, final judgment, after the thousand-year reign of the Messiah, they, the death, hell, and the grave, they shall be cast into the lake of fire. That's the final. So really, there's no such thing. When you die, there's no such thing as in between purgatory. I don't care what no, you, whatever, no whatever denominations say, right? No purgatory. You, it's either heaven or hell, right? Right. And, mm -hmm. and that's why a lot of people, don't, they don't fear God. Right. Because they think they, they think, can make well, the decision afterwards. The, the, what was that? They think they can make the decision afterwards. Like after yeah, in purgatory. They think that their family can pray them through, but, but see, they, they can't. But, it, but it's not in the Bible. No. See, and, and no. you know, and, and I don't care whether it be whatever church it is, mm -hmm. whether that or any other church, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. there, 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 Jesus has said, there's John 14, 6, no one come to the Father unless they come to the Son. So, mm -hmm. so we have the two judgments, right? Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to tell people out there, see, the Bible says today, there's no fear of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Look at That's your right. political system today. I don't care whether it's Democrats or Republican Party. You've got abortion. You've got homosexuality. Mm -hmm. You've got gay marriage. You've got Planned Parenthood. Transgender. Transgender. You've got all these uh, things that are a no-no. And God says in the last days, mm -hmm. there would be a falling away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? And I'm, we're just trying to show you out there we're, I'm not a scholar, and he's a, a very preacher, good preacher, preaches the word. And she knows that she, and you run across people that come and take food and everything else, right, down in your ministry, right? Mm -hmm. You have a chance to tell them about Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. They have no idea about judgments, am I right? Right. You have to do the best you can, right? Yeah. I, I, I'm just telling you today, people, that, that God has using anything at all times. Joyce, mm -hmm. you know your background, right? Mm -hmm. When you got saved, right? Mm -hmm. you, you went to another church, right? I always thought I was a Christian, but this one Sunday morning, I was a senior in high school, and um, the pastor said, you know, a lot of good people sitting here today, but if you have never personally invited mm. Jesus mm. into your heart, and I'm sitting there thinking, hmm, I don't remember ever having said, and so I did. I just, right there, bowed my head. I tell you, I danced. I downtown Sharon all the way almost to Sharpsville. Hallelujah. I danced almost all the way home. I was so excited because mm -hmm. I knew something inside of me Amen. had changed. Mm. And you know, I I always thought I was a Christian because I went to church every Sunday. Right. If anybody would ask, yes, I'm a Christian. But God just sealed it that day for Amen. me. Amen. Just sealed it. God didn't Amen. tell us, he didn't say you had to be a Christian. <laughs> Jesus said, a man must be born again. Right. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. That, that, and Dawn quotes it a thousand times, that John chapter 3, when Jesus came to Nicodemus by night, he was a religious ruler, and Nicodemus said, what must a man do to enter into, into heaven? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, listen, a man must be born again. Yeah. That's it. You uh -huh. must be born again. And Nicodemus said, how am I going to be born again? Am I to enter into my mother's womb? That's a good question. Yeah. And Jesus said, no. He said, that which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit of God mm -hmm. is spirit. So listen, my friend, if you're watching today, you're rather born of the flesh, and you know you're born of the flesh, or you have been born of God. And that's what we're, that is everything that this ministry is about. Dawn's preached it over and over and over again. It's souls and making sure that you're prepared for eternity. That's why we're here. 
And that is the deciding factor. Everything else is secondary, but you got to make sure that you are born again. Wow. Not if you're Catholic, not if you're Baptist, not if you're Presbyterian, not if, not if, you're, not if you're Christian. Because we've titled. We've given right. it a title uh, right. instead of born again. A man we give it a title. must, right. Yeah. That's a good point. It's not yeah. even a Christian. It's a man must be born again. So from now on, and my mom just did this recently, so when we put down, when they ask you what your religion is. That's right. I just watched her recently write down born again. She did that <laughs> on a form. <laughs> Yeah, she and did. She wrote down born again. She did. Yep. How wonderful. Yeah. She asked my father, what religion are you? And he was like, well, the same as you. And she goes, well, are you born again? You know, and I look back on yeah. it and she wrote born again. Oh, she did not sweet. write Christian. She wrote yeah. born again. Oh. Well, probably, True. probably whoever read that wouldn't even understand that. <laughs> yeah. Probably. But mm -hmm. who knows? That's maybe it was sad. a seed planted. Find out what is born again. Yeah. yeah. You, you must you be know? born again. Just like Ron said there, right? You know, and, and you know, to summarize up this program, and this is true, Ron, and, and or, you know, Crossing Pastor, you know, I have met so many people in my office being a tax man, and, and my staff knows where I stand and so forth. But here's a simple message that I want to leave with everybody, and Amen. it is simple, because, you know, a lot of people in my office, when I'm doing their tax return, and I have to use this little trick I do, but I got their W-2, they're trapped. <laughs> they cannot leave. So <laughs> they got to hear the gospel. I never had one person really get mad at me, only one person in my lifetime, and I've been in the business now 50 years, and I said to her, she said, I, she said, Don, I found the perfect church. And I said, well, if you join, it won't be perfect anymore. And she got so mad, she never come back. She was full of religion. She didn't know Jesus. But I explained to my clients, and you can explain to your kids, it's very simple. There's another man that came into my office one day, and I was telling the scripture, and I said, are you born again? He said, I go to church. Now, this is the first thing they'll say, or I'm a Baptist, or I'm a Methodist. I've been water baptized, right? I, I tied my income. I'm, I'm yeah. working down the Sharon General yeah. Hospital. And, I, and for one 20 minutes, I just sat there like Jesus would sit on the throne. I'm telling you, the Bible says death and judgment, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and he's going on for 25 minutes, or a woman, because I use the same thing. Yeah. And I'm saying, now, let me tell you what the Bible says. I said, you know, you've been there in front of my presence now for 25 minutes. Mm. And you haven't mentioned the name of Jesus Christ once. Wow. She said, what do you mean? Mm. Do you know Jesus? Oh, then why didn't you mention his name? Wow. See, you can't mention his name and talk about him if you don't know him personally. Mm -hmm. So I use this with my children, my people, my, you know, that's just a simple way of, of saying salvation, right? Mm -hmm. And I, backed by scripture, John 14, or, I, I'm just telling you people, they're so confused today with the different cults coming to the yeah. door. And, you got to be water baptized frontwards and backwards and sideways <laughs> yeah. and sprinkled, all don't. sprinkled yourself and don't even try to explain it to them. But the Bible is very seriously, seriously here. Don't believe me and don't believe the pastor and don't believe my wife. Don't believe her. The Bible is very specifically, I challenge you to pick up the Bible. Amen. You, you know why? Because you can't. See, you go to church, half the churches, they don't carry Bibles in. They, when our time is running out here, and my time is so precious when it comes to salvation. Mm, yeah. I cannot close any program, and I've been on television now for 20 years, saved for 42 years. I'm still a Christian under construction. Yeah. And you can prove it by asking her. But, however, what do you stand? I'm just telling you. Amen. Ask Jesus, say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Amen. God, when a sinner, the Holy Spirit's right on. Mm -hmm. Say, Lord, right now, forgive me for my sins. I believe. You see, when you say believe, you receive. John 1, 12 says, through all those who receive and became sons of God. I'm telling you, you receive. Say, Lord, forgive me. When the Lord hears that, Ron, yes. he took all my sins, and I use this illustration, bushel basket, Niagara Falls, in the top and see it forgetfulness. Amen. How about that? Amen. And the next day it wasn't quite as full. 
<laughs> but you know what? There'll probably be a bushel basket tomorrow. But guess where it goes? Sea of forgetfulness. I'm free. John 8.32 says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. John 8.36 says, if the Son shall set you free, you're free indeed. I was an alcoholic. I was a gambler. I was a liar. I was an adulterer. But I am free. Do you want to be free today? Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Accept me now. I believe that you died for my sins, arose from the grave. Write my name. We just said, write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. You see? Two books. Lamb's Book of Life. And say, Lord, right now, I thank you. Now start thanking him. Now we have a telephone, 724-981-7777. God's perfect number. Or 855-981-9777. Call somebody. Please make that commitment today. Today is the day of salvation. God bless you. We love you. And Jesus loves you too. Something is wrong with America. She once held the Bible as her conscience and guide. But we've allowed those who hold nothing to be sacred, like Sodom of old, to push more rules aside. Where are the men who once stood for right? and the women who champion their cause. We must return to the values we left before this country we love is totally lost. We want America back. We want America We want America back. This nation is like a runaway train headed down the wrong track. It's time for the army of God to arrive. America, but I do not love what she has become. Scripture says, blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord. But America has forgotten the godly foundation upon which she was built. Something is wrong. Our children are asked to attend public schools that in many cases resemble war zones without even the most basic right of any soldier, the right to pray to the God of heaven. Many times the wild-eyed, drug-addicted, gun-carrying teenager is allowed to stay in school while our Supreme Court decided to expel God from the classroom over 40 years ago. Something is wrong. Television daily bombards the senses of our nation with the idea that wrong is right, that the abnormal is normal, that the abhorred is acceptable, and that what God calls an abomination is nothing more than an alternate lifestyle. And it's had an effect. 40 years ago, the number one television program in America was The Andy Griffith Show. Look what we have today. Something is wrong when our government can pass out contraceptives to children in school without parental consent. And yet the Gideons can no longer pass out the Bible on campus. Something is wrong when our leaders can say to your children and mine that premarital sex is all right as long as it's safe. Yes, something is wrong. And I, for one, am ready for a change. I would say to my government, I'm not raising dogs at my house. I'm raising children created in the image and likeness of Almighty God, and I'm gonna teach them the Bible. If the Bible says it's right, it's right. And if the Bible says it's wrong, it's wrong. The only hope that America has is if godly men and women of character will stand together as one mighty army and declare to the immoral, the impure, the obscene and the foul, your days of unlimited access to the minds of America are over. The army of God that has been silent 
too long is taking America back. We want America back. We want America back from those who have no self-control. We This nation is like a runaway train Headed down the wrong track It's time for the army of God to arise And say we want America back It's time for the army of God to arise When you support Crossing Paths, you're helping to release the power of testimony. There's many people who know about God, but they don't know Him personally. They don't know His true nature, and they don't know His heart. The stories that we bring you each week testify to the power of God and to the love of God. Through these testimonies, people all over the country are getting to know the Lord and developing a hunger to know Him more. When that relationship becomes alive, it's clear to see that no person or no situation is too far gone for the power of God. I like to share with people that it's very important to know who you are in Christ because that day, if that was me laying there, I know that I would have missed uh, heaven. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him, referring to the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. God is still the same. He's still this, God's word is still the same. They say times are changing. Times are changing, but God is still the same. It's, it's a no brainer for me. You don't have to have a doctor degree to know oh. that God is good. He loves sinners. He just does not like to sin. When you partner with Crossing Pass and sow a seed into this ministry, you are helping us get the power of the testimony and the gospel over the airwaves. This will help people understand better who God is and connect them to the plans He has for them. Please call us today and support this vision.